Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a video on stock charts, specifically candlestick charts. What are they and how do I create one based on a stock's historical data? So in this video, I'm going to show you how to download the historical data for any given ticker symbol using a variety of methods, either from Yahoo Finance, IEX Cloud, or Alpaca and Polygon. And then we're going to get that data and we're going to put it in a CSV file. And then I'm gonna show you how to use Plotly in Python to generate this candlestick chart. So here is the final output of what we're creating. It's the chart for Apple stock. And you see, I've also put some annotations for particular market events. So you can see Apple cutting guidance on January 2nd, how that was a good buying opportunity. And then you can see the impact of the Trump tariffs, tariff tweets. So when the trade war escalated, you see that the stock sold off. And then also you can see when Apple reported Q4 earnings, you see it just continued to go up. So let's break this down and start talking about uh, candlestick charts. So candlestick charts, if you look on the wiki, wiki page, um, you see these all the time, but do you really know what they mean? Well, here is what goes into it. So you'll see here on the candlestick chart page, um, it shows a bullish candlestick and a bearish candlestick. And so all you really need to do to make a candlestick chart is you just need data for any given day. So you just need the opening and closing price as well as the high and the low price for any given stock symbol. So you can see the on a green candle here, the opening is at the bottom. And since it went up and closed higher, we have a green candlestick and the body of the candle uh, is green and it only includes the open and close. And then the high and the low here is the shadow of the candle. And so the low here is at the bottom and then the high is up here, which is outside of the body of the candlestick. And then a bearish candlestick, you have the open at the top and the close at the bottom and the candlestick is colored red. So obviously we need to get some data in order to draw one of these candlestick charts. So we'll need these pieces of data. We'll need dates, the high, the low, and the open and the close for that given date. So let's talk about how to get uh, that historical data using some open financial APIs. And we're gonna use all data sources that are free so anyone can do this. So I'm gonna close that. And before we get going, uh, remember there's now a GitHub repository at Finance Hacks. And I've put some source code here in case you don't wanna type in everything and you just wanna learn and follow along. Um, you can open this and see all the different data sources we're using. For instance, Yahoo will be our first data source. I've created a new uh, editor here. Um, it's just an empty folder and I'm gonna create a new file. And I'm gonna call this file requirements.txt. So we're gonna be writing code in Python. And if you looked at any of my previous videos, when we use Python, uh, we install some package dependencies and we put those dependencies inside of a file called requirements.txt. That way we can easily install those dependencies and get started. So for this video, um, we're going to need a few external dependencies. So we need Plotly, which is what we're going to use for charting. We need Pandas, which is a data library that uses something called data frames to load data. We need requests, which is used for making HTTP requests. So we're going to be hitting these third-party APIs and making HTTP requests to download data. And I'm also going to include Y Finance, which is a Yahoo Finance package that someone created in order to pull data from Yahoo Finance. Um, Yahoo has changed um, their methods for um, downloading data. So that you'll see many methods broken um, on the web. Now it requires you to send like a specific header, or specific cookies to download data. So what this package does is just makes that process easy. It, it obtains the cookie you need and passes it to Yahoo so that you can retrieve data. And I tested this today and this method still works. So we have four dependencies here and we're gonna install them all. I have Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna do a new terminal. And so my directory is called uh, stock data and I wanna install these requirements. And so I have what's called a virtual environment to install my packages so that they're not uh, installed globally. And so I'm gonna enable that virtual environment. So if I activate that and then I go to stock data Okay, so I've activated my virtual environment. And so now I can do pip3 install dash r requirements text. And this will download and install all of those dependencies. So those are all installed now. And next, I'm going to create a directory called data. And we're going to go through the different methods uh, for uh, downloading data. So I'm going to create a file for each. We're going to use Yahoo. So I have yahoo.py. 
we're going to use IEX Cloud. So I'll do IEX Cloud. And I'm also going to use a service called uh, Alpaca, which I featured in some other videos. So I'm going to start out with Yahoo since it's the simplest uh, method that we have um, because it's all encapsulated in a nice package. So we just need to import that Yahoo package to get started. So I'm going to import our Y finance package as YF. And then all we need to do is use the ticker object. And these are all documented in this Y finance page. So if you go to pypy.org, uh, this is the project and it installs Y finance and it goes through some of the methods and we're just going to use this history method here. And so all you do is create a ticker um, object here and then you can just call this method called history. So I'm going to use, since we're going to get the max maximum amount of data available, I'm going to use a recently IPO stock like Slack. So I'll do a uh, ticker and I'll do ticker symbol work. And then so I'll do work or let's do slack equals yf.ticker work. And then to get the history, all we have to do now is go slack.history and you pass it a period and I want all of the data available. So I'm gonna do max and then let's just print the history. See what that looks like. So I'm gonna go Python three and data run that script you'll see we have the history. So you see in June is around where uh, Slack started trading. And so this is open, the high, the low, close, and the volume, and we have a date. So it's exactly the kind of, kind of information we need in order to generate a candlestick chart. So you see it goes all the way up until today, which uh, is December 27th, which was yesterday. So you'll notice at the bottom here, it says rows and columns, 133 rows and seven columns. So where did that come from? So this is actually a pandas data frame. So if you were to print the type of this object, you'll see it says pandas core data frame. So you might may or may not want a data frame. The data frame gives you a lot of methods to perform other analysis, but you may want a CSV. So I'll do print history dot, and you'll see that pandas data frame, data frame, has a two CSV method that lets you convert it to a CSV. So we might want to just save this in a file. So I'll call the two CSV method. If we do that, you'll see this gives us a nicely formatted uh, CSV. So I'm going to delete the rest of this stuff. And then there you go. We have the CSV and let's say I want to output that to the file. Well, I'm on the command line and I can just redirect the output with a little uh, arrow here and I can do yahoo.csv and it'll output that to another file and you see in my base directory here I now have this yahoo csv and it's nicely formatted we have a header dates and all of the different data that we need so that does it for yahoo so how do you do it with another service like iex cloud so I'm going to do that as well so I have a new file called iexcloud.py and so I am going to want to use iex cloud uh, to download data. And IEX Cloud is a service that's at iexcloud.io. And you can log in and sign up and then it'll give you an API key. So I have an IEX Cloud account already and you see uh, it'll show you the tokens. Um, this is just a sandbox token so I can show it to you. So I can copy this token into this file and assign it a value or assign it to a variable. So I need a token. And then if you go through IX Cloud's um, documentation, they have a lot of different methods here. So you might be asking like, why would I use this when the Yahoo method was so easy? Well, this has a whole lot of methods uh, available. You can see a lot of information about dividends, uh, research, um, uh, return of capital, an IPO calendar. There's tons and tons of data to explore here. So I highly recommend uh, signing up for this. Uh, you get a certain number of API requests free so you can play around with it. And it's not even that expensive if you just if you decided to buy it. So if you look through the documentation, you see there's a historical prices here and there's this request for um, a stock's range. So you can request all data for any a range of dates and it'll give it to you. Um, it'll give you the data as JSON format which we can then output as a CSV for our charting, charting library. So we have a date, open, high, low, close. So this is exactly what we need. And so we just need to find the URL we need in the format. So you'll see we have this one here. Um, let's do the maximum again, and we'll use the IEX API sandbox. 
Okay, and so I'm going to import requests, which is our HTTP request library, and then I'll assign this URL um, to a string. And then this looks like it's using Twitter. Um, let's use a stock like Apple. So we'll do symbol. So we'll do a little constant here. We'll capitalize it. And then let's format that string. So I'll put these placeholders and the, for the uh, ticker and the token. And then I'll do dot format. And then I'll use my symbol and my token here. And we can make a request. So in the request library, you're, you use request.get. And you can request the URL just like that. And now let's see if we can get a response from IEX Cloud. So I am going to print out r.content, which is the content um, that's returned from this request. And so Python 3, and we'll do data slash IEX Cloud and see what that data looks like. And you see that worked correctly. We have this big uh, blob of JSON data. So how do we parse that JSON data and convert it to CSV? Well, I'm going to import the JSON Python module and the CSV module. So if we do that, I'll do uh, JSON data equals, and then we'll do JSON.loads, the loads method, and I'll take a string and convert that to a Python data structure, which will be like a dictionary or a list of dictionaries. So I'll do JSON.loads r.content and now if I print the JSON data, um, you'll see it's actually more like a Python dictionary or a Python list. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of data here and now I want to go ahead and write that to a CSV file. So we have JSON data now and it's loaded into a Python dictionary, but uh, we can also iterate over this since it looks like it's a Python list. So we'll do for item in JSON data, print item, and you see now we have a big list. And so for each date, we have the open closing price and so forth. Okay, so I wanna write this data to a CSV file now. So I have a CSV uh, package built into Python. So I can create a new CSV file. So I'll do CSV file equals open. So we're gonna open a file on the file system and it'll create it for us. And we're opening a file and we're calling it stock.csv and W, so we're gonna open it for writing, and it'll automatically create uh, that file on the file system for us. And then we create a CSV writer, so it can write um, to this CSV file. And so this is csv.writer, and then we pass it the CSV file that we wanna to write to. And then if we wanna write something to this file, all we have to do is do csv. Dot, or csv writer dot write row, and then we give it a list of items to write to it. So first I'll write the header here. So I'll do CSV writer um, dot write row and it's a function and then you just pass it a list. So the format we're going to use, we're starting with the date and then we're going to print the open, the high, the low, and the close. And then pandas or plotly, our graphing library is gonna be able to read a file in this format and make a chart based off that. So right now we're writing the headers, and now I'm going to use the uh, write out the actual uh, values. So we have item, and it looks like we have close, open, high, low. We have the exact same uh, data here, so it has the same name. So we'll do item date, item open, item high, and then we'll do item low, and then we'll do item close. Okay, so we'll write those rows to this file, and then we can close the file, CSV writer dot close. Okay, so when I do that and run it again, it'll run, and it says it has no attribute close. Oh yeah, because that's on the file, so we're closing the file. And I'll run that, and now you see on my uh, file system here on the left, you'll see we have this doc.csv, and we have this nice historical data it looks like it goes back to the last five years. So it starts in 2014 and we have lots of data that we can chart. So that's a lot of data for Apple. So I'm gonna change it and only do year to date. So I can change this parameter to YTD here. And then when I run it again, it'll write the stock data and we'll only have the data for 2019. So it looks like the free is limited to five years, but if you sign up, it'll give you 
a bigger uh, range of data that goes back further than five years. Okay. And then for Alpaca, I'm not going to show that one, but I have um, a GitHub example. So if you go in the GitHub repository um, for finance hacks, um, you'll see that we have historical data here. And then under data, there's also an example for Alpaca. And it's very similar. Uh, you just need to provide your Alpaca data API key, and you can provide a start and end date. And then it requests a URL. Um, and then you just load that and print it out the same way. And for that one, uh, it returns a Unix timestamp. So there's a little bit of uh, date time modification here. So I show you how to convert that Unix timestamp into the proper format so that you can chart this data. And then we just print it out. So that's it for uh, acquiring the data. So I'm going to stop the video here. And the next video, I'm going to talk about how to chart this data and create the candlestick chart using Plotly. Thanks a lot and stay tuned for the next video.